Hey guys, Matt from Model Minutes here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I get a very simple silver finish for only £2. For those of you out there who are really struggling to get a nice silver finish using a paintbrush and some pot paint, or you don't have some airbrush ready paint in an airbrush, how do we combat that problem? Join me in this video as I show you how I managed to get quite a simple yet effective silver paint finish for only £2. So like I said, hand painting using a paintbrush and thinning your paints can be quite laborious and it results in leaving brush strokes occasionally. And if you're a beginner and you're really struggling to get that down and get a nice silver finish doing that, then what's your next alternative? Well, a lot of people would reach for one of these, but to be brutally honest, you don't need to have one of these in order to get a nice silver finish. Instead, I'm going to be using these, some very cheap spray paints, which I got in a local home hardware shop, also known as rattle cans because of the obvious sound that they make. What I've got here are two, a black gloss and a metallic silver, and each one of these cost a pound. So for two pounds, we're going to be able to get a nice looking silver finish. A word of warning when using spray paints, please ensure you use a well ventilated area, preferably outside so that you don't breathe any of the nasty stuff in. And also what you've got to do when preparing for these paints is properly shake them. They've got those little balls inside, which when you shake them, they rattle. But I find that sitting it on a radiator that is warm, not hot, but just warm enough to help move all of the paint around on the inside also helps. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Airfix sprue. This is a spare wing from the Wildcat set, which I just don't need. So I'm going to use this to demonstrate how I get my silver finish just like the one that I did earlier. There are a few little points. I was in a rush when I made this original one and uh, I sprayed the paint far too close to the plastic and it's created a slight rippling effect in a few places. But the way that you avoid that is by spraying from far enough away, about 30 centimeters or so in a nice gentle side to side motion. So make sure you've got yourself a spraying area. If you want to, you can use tape or blue tack to hold the sprue down into your spraying area, but I'm just going to leave it as it is because this is quite heavy and I know it won't move. So like I said, prepare your paint by giving it a good shake. Now this could take a couple of minutes to get the paint evenly mixed. And the first one I'm going to use is a black gloss. Working from a fair distance in a side to side motion, I'm going to give the plastic parts nice even layers. And then we leave it to dry. You can speed up the drying of this by blowing on it or using a fan or a hairdryer, but the risk you run there is by blowing dust or other particles onto the paint as it dries and then leaving them on the paint finish. So what I'm looking for is a nice, even, glossy finish of this paint. So we'll give it another couple of coats. At this point now, you can see that we've got a fairly nice, glossy finish. So whilst the paint is drying, a quick shout out to my patrons over on Patreon and my channel members here on YouTube. A massive thank you to these guys whose generous support goes directly back into funding the channel. I'd like to welcome Harry as the newest member who joins us in the advanced tier on Patreon. Welcome to the club. With this gloss black paint now on its way to being dry, the next tin of paint we're going to prepare is the silver one. So again, we're going to use the exact same process, give it a good shake for a couple of minutes. It's been pre-warmed on the radiator, and then I'm going to spray it in the exact same manner. What the black gloss layer should do is help bring out the shine of the uh, silver and also give it a bit of contrast. It's always a good idea to test your spray paint to the side and not actually on the model when you first start. That's just to get a good idea of how it's going to react when you put it on, how the paint's going to come out of the tin and how you need to control it. So once again, we'll do a few thin layers of this paint until we've got the finish that we're looking for. You can also get different tonal variations as you do this. At this stage now, it's not quite an aluminium kind of finish, it's more of a gunmetal. So if you left it here, it would look quite good as sort of uh, machine guns or engine parts. But for this particular one, I need to go a little bit further so we get a sort of aluminium kind of look. There we go, and for the sake of this video, I'm going to call it there. We've got a relatively nice silver looking finish on these parts, so let's take a closer look at it. The paint finish is relatively smooth. I have got a few little areas where I went a little bit too heavy with the uh, spray paint. 
but I'm sure with a little bit of practice you'd be able to get really nice control. What I like about the black is that it's added elements of contrast, so there's darker areas in certain places, and almost uh, like elements of panel lines being visible. So for those of you who've been struggling with your silver finishes, I hope you found this useful. And it just goes to show that you don't always need the most expensive tools in the set to get relatively good results. But what did you think of this one? Do you think for the sake of £2 that this is quite a good result, or would you prefer a different method? Let me know down in the comments. As always, take a look in the description for links on how to connect with me on my different social media accounts, and how to get involved as a patron or channel member. All that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.